and joins us now. Uh, Senator, it's always great to see you. Thank you. So this Air Force Academy political science professor is basically saying and arguing that racism was ingrained in the military from the beginning, and it still is, though she cites no current evidence. Your thoughts? Yeah, Trace, I read Professor Garcia's op-ed. It's clear that she knows very little about our Constitution, which is so typical of colleges these days. And she has no business teaching the Constitution or political science to cadets at the Air Force. Uh, Secretary Austin has testified at least twice that our military does not uh, teach, instruct, condone critical race theory. Uh, so Ms. Garcia probably wants, should start looking for a different place of employment, in my opinion. Uh, furthermore, uh, it shouldn't require you know, an op-ed in the Washington Post or United States Senator making these inquiries for someone to ex exercise some oversight of what's being taught to our cadets at the service academy. So I suspect that General Clark, the superintendent of the Air Force Academy, and I will be having a conversation very soon about all this. It is, we should not be teaching and indoctrinating our cadets to believe that our military is a fundamentally racist institution. Who exactly is going to want to raise their hand and take an oath to defend yeah. our Constitution if you believe what Professor Garcia is teaching about it? And I found it fascinating when you asked uh, Secretary Austin about that, does he think the military is fundamentally racist? He, and yes or no answer you asked for, and he said, I can't give you a yes or no answer because it needs more. And then he ultimately said, no, I don't believe it's fundamentally racist. The professor's op-ed goes on to say this, Senator, quoting, I don't coddle my cadets out of fear that exposure to certain literatures might make them uncomfortable or test their existing beliefs. Cadets must learn to be brave on the literal battlefield. Yes, but they must also be equipped to participate bravely on the battlefield of ideas. But there was argument saying this is not a, a battlefield of robust ideas. It's telling some cadets they're racist because of the color of their skin. W what's your thought on that? Yeah, Trace, that's one of the main problems with critical race theory. This is not just like, say, teaching Karl Marx in a survey class about the history of Western philosophy. It is almost unheard of that someone just teaches critical race theory versus indoctrinates people with it. And I think it's clear from the tone and the argument of Professor Garcia's op-ed that she's not merely presenting mm -hmm. some academic theory and letting her students choose among them. I, I'm quite sure that she's probably trying to indoctrinate them with it, trying to teach them that, yes, the Constitution in America is inherently racist and has been from the very beginning and remains so today. That is the opposite of what we should be teaching our young cadets who are soon to be the Air Force's leaders because they're going to be in charge of troopers of all races. They're going to serve under the command of troopers in all races. And the one thing they need to see is a fellow American who raised his or her hand to take the oath, defend our Constitution, and is willing to lay down their life to defend each other. Yeah, I think it's a fair point. I, I want to change gears here because I know you have to be baffled at the Washington Post and saying that we need to get to the... Can we put these headlines up? The, the, these headlines are just worth it. You have this, Tom Cotton keeps repeating a coronavirus conspiracy theory that was already debunked. And now, oh, where did COVID come from? We need to get serious about finding out. Really, Senator? Yeah. Well, the Washington Post is welcome to join the party 18 months late. Look, anyone with an ounce of common sense could look at what happened in Wuhan and say, you know what, there's a good chance the virus came from that lab. I mean, there are no vats in this city. It's larger than New York. It's right down the road from the lab where they conduct research into these vats. Now, there are still a lot of unanswered questions out of Wuhan, and I'm not sure the Chinese Communist Party is ever going let to let us find those answers. But, you know, frankly, we need to get some answers up in Washington as well. Well, I mean, there's at least a, a real chance that this virus escaped from that lab where they're performing research into how to make coronaviruses more dangerous, funded by U.S. tax dollars that were approved by Tony Fauci. There are still a lot of answers that we need to get from Tony Fauci and from others who are involved in sending your tax dollars to that lab, to that lab in Wuhan. S uh, sir, I've got to go, but I wanted to get your quick take uh, on the former president filing a lawsuit against big tech, saying that he should be reinstated and, you know, something else. A lot of legal experts say it's a long shot. 
Well, I think the uh, President Trump feels like a lot of conservatives across Arkansas and across the country do is that you'll be censored if you suggest, for instance, that this virus may have originated in the lab right down right. the street from where the virus purportedly originated, or if you speak out against big tech. Yet, if you say something negative about Hunter Biden, you'll also be censored. So I think. President Trump is actually speaking uh, the same thing that a lot of Americans feel if they have a conservative yeah. viewpoint when they go on social media. Yeah, and the, the sad thing about it is the Wuhan lab leak was not a fringe conspiracy theory. The Hunter Biden laptop was not disinformation. This was stuff that was censored because they thought it was something that was, in essence, political. Senator, thank you for your time. As always, we appreciate it. Thank you, Trace. Yep.